Psalms chapter 29. And I want to begin reading here at verse number one. I want you to listen to the voice of God as he speaks through the psalm of David. Amen. Psalms chapter 29 beginning in verse one. The text reads, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. And worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the truth of God that is contained in the pages of Scripture. May you open up the eyes of the blind and pierce the hearts of them that are in darkness and shine forth the light of your glory and raise us up in Jesus' name that you might get the glory out of our lives. And we thank you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we're coming out of Psalms, chapter 29, beginning at verse 1. And when you read the psalm, this is not just a text of scripture. This is actually a psalm that was written by David. Amen. Amen. And he begins to utter these words that were imparted in his spirit. He said, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Now, who is the mighty that he's referring to in this text? He's speaking on behalf of the righteous. Amen. 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 Because God has done something for his people, and he expects a return on his investment. Amen. Are you listening to me? He said, give unto the Lord. Now, in order to give unto God, you got to have something to get to him. Are you listening to me? This is why it's so important to receive the new birth. Praise God. Because when you get saved, you become a partaker of his holiness. Are you listening to me? Praise God. And when God comes to live on the inside of you, you become a carrier of his glory. And the scripture says, give unto the Lord the glory. When God deposits his anointing in your life, he expects to make a withdrawal on that which he deposited within your heart. Are you listening to me? He said, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, and give unto the Lord glory and strength. Then he says in verse 2, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Now to every child of God, you owe God. Amen. Amen. You owe God. And if I had 10,000 tongues, I could never repay him. But regardless if I can never repay him for all that he has done for me, he expects you to pay him. Come on. The text says, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Now the word due means something that is owed to someone else. The word do also means an obligatory payment. Praise God. The word do also means to give credit. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. The word do means to give something that is owed to someone else. It also means an obligatory payment or to give credit. 
And when the scripture brings this out in the second verse of Psalm chapter 29, that we're to give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, that means we owe him. Right. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Why do I owe him? Because he saved your soul. Come on. The word saved derives from the word salvation, which means deliverance from sin. It also means to be rescued. What did he rescue me from? From spending eternity in hellfire, paying for my sins that I can never pay. Are you listening to me? And because God has done this wonderful thing in the hearts of his beloved, the scripture says we owe him. Come on. Are you listening to me? He ain't talking to churchgoers. He talking to the beloved. Them that have been redeemed by the hand, out of the hand of the enemy. That's what he's talking about. See, a sinner can never give, give God anything because they don't have nothing to give them. You're not listening to me. Praise God. They don't have anything to give them. They need to repent and come to the cross and let the blood of Jesus wash them. Come on now. They need to call on his name so he can fill them with the Holy Ghost. And when he comes to live on the inside of you, now you have something on the inside that God expects you to give back to him. What do you have that you didn't have before? You have a praise. Come on, somebody. See, what many people attempt to do is praise God outside of his grace. They have not become a partaker of his holiness. They have rejected his grace, but yet they are attempting to praise God with a corrupt heart. Why would you attempt to praise God when you reject Jesus? Come on, somebody. How much sense does that make? Can anybody make sense in my brain so I can understand? Praise God. How can you praise God when you reject are you listening to me? It doesn't make sense. See, we become so pharisaical. We don't care what the Bible says. We think just because we put our hands together that we praise in God. But I come to tell you, praise his holy name. That you really can't praise God outside of his grace. Are you listening to me? Because when you get through singing, when you get through clapping, when you get through going through the motions, the scripture declares your heart is still far from him. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Are you listening? Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. In 1 Peter chapter 2, Beginning at verse 9 through verse 10. I want you to look at this. 1 Peter chapter 2. Begin reading here at verse number 9 and verse 10. The text reads, but you are a chosen generation. Now he's speaking to the beloved. Them who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. See, it's important that we read the Bible right. Amen? Amen. You have to read it correctly. Because if you're not careful, you will begin to incorporate people in the text that can never live up to what God says because they are still outside of his grace. Are you listening to me? But he says to the beloved, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, if it was okay to praise God while I'm living in darkness, why would he need to bring me out of the darkness into his marvelous light? Come on. Can anybody make that make sense to me? Maybe, you know, my IQ is very low and I don't really understand. 
But I'm trying to show you what the Bible says. It's the reason why he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because the reason why he brought us out of darkness, because in that place we were serving Satan. Colossians chapter 1 says he, he delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. No glory out of 
of your life. Just going through the motions of coming to church, clapping your hands, singing along with the choir, does not validate you as a believer in Christ Jesus. You can tell others you believe, but the truth of the matter is, if you're still in darkness, you are a liar. You have no fellowship with God because you reject the only one who can reconcile you back to the Father. says he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why? That we might show forth his praise. And how many understand that when you have been called to salvation you have been called to be a praiser. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And if you're not obeying God, then God gets no praise. Right. If you're not bringing forth that good fruit, God is not getting no glory. So you can't hide behind the clap, the dance, and the shout. Because in the scriptures we see there was a religious sect of men who did that. They were called the Pharisees. The scripture says in the gospel of Matthew chapter 15, they honored God with their mouth. They drew nigh unto him with their lips. But their heart was far from him. Hallelujah. And how many know that God searches the reins of our heart? Hallelujah. He's not looking at your heart the way you are. He's not looking at your heart the way you feel. God knows the heart. He knows the heart. Hallelujah. It ain't about feelings. It ain't about what you think. Hello, somebody. It's about what he sees. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. You can't rebel against God and talking about you love Jesus. You can't truth and call yourself a praiser. Come on, that don't match. That don't match. It's already a shame that we mix and match. But you can't mix and match that which is of the flesh with that which is of the spirit. They don't go together, praise God. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? We gotta put the difference between holy and He's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we might show forth his praise. And I wonder how long we're to do that. Hallelujah. In Psalms chapter 35 and verse 28, we are given the answer. David is a measuring stick that every born again believer needs to shadow. And the scripture says this, Psalm chapter 35, beginning at verse 27 and verse 28. Psalm chapter 35, verse 27 and verse 28, the text says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Look at that. You mean to tell me God wants praise all day? All day. Come on now. Hallelujah. We owe him all day. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care, praise God, if you're having marital problems. I don't care if you got pain in your body. The scripture says, give unto the Lord the glory that is due. Are you listening to me? Because I can most certainly tell you that if your gas bill is due, they don't care if your cell phone bill is due. They don't care if your rent is due. They don't care if your 
your car note is due. Or if your insurance is due. They want their money, praise God. Hallelujah. Because it's due. And the Bible said, give unto the Lord the glory that is due. When is it due? It's due every day, all day. Come on. It's due every day, all day. And you know, we treat God like the bill collector. We ignore our bills that are due. We just overlook it. We flip it to the side. We act like it's not fair. Praise God. And we treat God with the same attitude. Are you listening to me? Because the truth of the matter is, people have never been spiritually ed educated to know what it really means to praise God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why your spiritual debt continues to grow. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But the text makes it very plain. That God's praise is due every day, all day. Amen. Did he say that in the text? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He said, my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness yeah. and thy praise all the day long. Yeah. If you're not convinced, let's go over to Psalms chapter 96. Psalms chapter 96, beginning at verse 1. Listen to the text. Psalm chapter 96, beginning at verse 1. The scripture reads, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise God. Amen. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Amen. See that? Amen. From day to day. All day, his praise is due. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And like the old saints used to say, if I had 10,000 tongues, I, I couldn't praise him enough. But I'm going to praise him with the one tongue I do have. Come on. See, praising God ain't just shouting, mm -hmm. dancing, right. clapping, lifting up your hands. The meat of praising God is obedience. If you're not obeying God, he gets no praise. Right. Amen. You can't disobey God and turn around and say hallelujah. You just mock the very God. You just disobey. See, that is a, a false praise or a false worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That wasn't a real praise or real worship. That was a false praise and a false worship. When you disobey God, you turn around and want to say, thank you, Jesus. Because something good happened to you. Right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't praise God in the dark. He brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hello, somebody. He wants us to praise him in the light. You're not talking to me. Is that what the scripture says? We're to show forth this salvation from day to day. Then he says in verse 3, Declare his glory among the heathen. You mean to tell me, even when we are amongst them that are not saved, we are to lift up the name Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. I don't care if you're on the job. God calls you to be obedient. And we must humble ourselves and submit to the authority of his word if he don't get glory even in the midst of his enemies. Are you listening to me? He said, declare his glory among the heathen. 
his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He's to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Are you listening to me? He goes on to say in verse 6, Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and pity are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. See that? Amen. To the beloved, when God makes you a praiser, he makes you a giver. Amen. You are always giving thanks. Amen. You are always giving glory. Oh, That's why he deposited his anointing on the inside of you. That you might render unto him that which rightfully belongs to him. When God allows us to go through trials, God said that doesn't shut off my praise. What the apostles say in Romans chapter 5, he said glory in your tribulation. Jesus said in the world you won't have tribulation. He said but be of good cheer. She is praying. Yeah. 
that he might get out of being glory. Because see, that's why he created me. He created me to give him glory. But when man is falling in his sinful state, he is unable to give God glory. Because he's in the flesh. He's broken the law. He's in sin. And he can't give God anything. That's why Jesus came to bring redemption. To reconcile us back to God. Where we can now give unto him that which he has invested in us. Are you listening to me? In verse 8 again, he said, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Who is he talking to in the text? He's speaking to the beloved. They who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on now. They who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because the scripture says in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? How many know you got to walk in the truth and walk in the spirit to worship him in the beauty of his Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Do we fear God today? Amen. Amen. Do we fear God? This is one thing that humanity does not do. They don't fear God. Amen. Many in the Christian church have fallen away from the truth. And they no longer fear God either. Hallelujah. They don't believe his word. They don't think judgment is coming. They don't think he's going to pour out his wrath without indignation. Come on. Are you listening? They just think that life is just going to go on like they see it go on every day. Well, Jesus talked about as it was in the days of Noah. They built it and planted. They was married and given in marriage until the day that Noah got on the ark and the Lord shut the door and the rains came from heaven and God broke up the foundations of the earth and water gushed up out of the earth and God brought judgment and destroyed the old world by a flood. Praise God. He said, just as it was in that time, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Praise God. But see, when you don't have faith in God, hallelujah, then you will not have the fear of God. Because when you don't have faith in God, you don't believe none of this. And you just continue going down the broad road that leads to destruction. Because you don't think these things are going to happen. Your mouth may say you believe it, but your actions say you don't believe it. Because when you really believe it, you'll be like old oh, Noah. When God warned him that he was going to destroy the world, the Bible said he moved with fear. Hello, somebody. And began to prepare his house for the saving of his soul as well as his family. He began to prepare that ark for the saving of his house. But the text still reads, Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. The word of God is right. The word of God is right. And the only way you believe it is if you humble yourself before him and begin to line up with him. If you continue to reject the truth of God and go back out there in the world of sin, then you are saying you don't believe it. Come 
on somebody. Believe in the Bible ain't just saying you believe it. But believe in the Bible is you lining up with what God says. Hello, somebody. See, that's believe in the Bible. He that is a hearer and not a doer deceiveth himself. You must not only be a hearer, but a doer of the word. Now that's a believer right there. Did you hear what the word of God teaches us? In James chapter 1. Did he say that? Verse 21 through 25. You can't just be a hearer and not a doer. That's not a believer. You can say you believe it. But what did the apostle James say? You must show your faith by your works. If you don't put it to action, you don't believe it. You just talking. You just blowing out hot air. You just a Pharisee. You just a hypocrite. You just a liar. And the truth is not in you. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? What did he say to the beloved? Give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto his name. God is calling his people back to obedience. Come on. Because if we fail to fulfill the call, then the scripture says in Colossians that the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. We don't understand how much Jesus loves us. We say we know it, but the truth is people don't really know how much Jesus loved them. They don't really know what he went through to redeem them out of the hand of the enemy and reconcile them back to God the Father. They don't really know. Hallelujah. That's why don't ever listen to what people say. Don't ever listen to what people say. They just full of hot air. They just talking, but in their heart they're far from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. You don't ever see people putting the word of God to practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Then they don't believe it. Amen. Don't go back just because they say they believe it. Praise God. You got to take heed to the Bible. Amen. You got to do what the scriptures teach us. Hallelujah. Amen. If they're not a doer of that which they heard, they have deceived themselves and they are declared to be an unbeliever. Because a believer obeys God. You don't fight the word of truth. You don't reject the grace of Christ. You don't trample the blood of Christ under your feet and call it as an unholy thing. Hello, somebody. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God is in the light. The Bible says, he that says he's in the light and he walks in darkness, he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. Did you see what the Holy Ghost said to the apostle? Come on. You cannot live in darkness. You cannot continue to live in sin and talk about our Lord Jesus. Right. Amen. Ain't nobody going to tell me that I don't have a relationship with God. Well, this preacher will tell you. And I will tell you about the scriptures. Because the scriptures is the word of God. And God will tell you that if you walk in darkness, you don't have no with God. You don't have no relationship with God. You've been lied to. But the will of God is to reconcile man back to himself through the sacrifice of his son. But the problem is we reject his son. That's why Jesus said no man can come to me except you come. He said no man can come to the Father except you come by me. And that's why many can't get to the Father. Because they reject the Son. Jesus said in John chapter 10, I'm the door. You can't come through the door and 
receive salvation and have fellowship with God when you reject Jesus. He's the door. We won't even come to the door. We won't even come through the door. Because that's the only way you can re be reconciled back to God the Father. Amen. You can't do it no other way. Don't, don't try like the Babylonians. Right. They tried to build a tower whose top will reach unto heaven. Trying to get to heaven a whole different way apart from Jesus. Many people today are rejecting the Jesus of the Bible and they're accepting another Jesus. And that's the Jesus that they're accepting. Hmm? Amen. Did the apostle preach that? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11? Yep. Did he preach that? Amen. And you would not believe there are many today that are believing in another Jesus. Just because people say the name Jesus does not mean they're talking about the Jesus of the Bible. Because the Jesus of the Bible is holy. Amen. He's holy. Praise God. Praise God. He hates sin. Hallelujah. Amen. He died on the cross to pay for our Hallelujah. sin. Amen. You cannot straddle the fence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And think you have an eternal inheritance in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Well, the Jesus of the Bible will never permit that. Because when he returns, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. Come on, somebody. The true gospel teaches us to live holy. And you cannot be intertwined with this wicked world that is on its way to hell. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Listen to the text. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to read it. Because this is the trap that many people are falling into in this end time hour. And they are being led to believe that just because they say they believe in Jesus, but when you look at their lifestyle, when you look at their belief system, when you look at how they compromise the truth that is in Scripture, you can know that they are believing in another Jesus. So don't be caught up when people say, I believe in Jesus. I want to make sure that the Jesus you believe in is the biblical Jesus. Amen. The Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Are you listening to me? Amen. Listen to the text. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 4, the apostle Paul said, For if he that come and preacheth another Jesus, See that? Amen. Have you examined yourself Amen. to see whether or not you are believing in another Jesus? Amen. I promise you, most have not. Amen. Because they have never really got to know the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. And that's why people have these perverted beliefs. Yet they say they believe in the Bible. Watch this. For if he that come and preacheth another Jesus whom we have not received, whom we have not preached, whom you have, he said, let me start over. For if he that come and preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached. See that? The apostles was preaching the Jesus of the Bible. But there were some others that was coming preaching Jesus but it was another Jesus. Right. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Amen. And remember when the enemy does that, he does it deceptively. Exactly. Amen. You think he's talking about the Jesus of the Bible, and he's really talking about another Jesus. Amen. And many are putting their trust in this other Jesus. That's why people think they can live the way they live and think they can be saved, still, still be saved right. while living in sin. Right. That's not what the Bible teaches. Amen. Come on. He said, if some come preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, see that? Uh -huh. Which you have not received, see that? Amen. There's a lot of people professing to receive the Holy Ghost, and they're not getting the Holy Ghost as it is displayed in Scripture. Amen. 
There's another spirit. A counterfeit anointing. That is coming up on a lot of people. And they think that's the Holy Ghost. And it's not. Because the Holy Ghost that's in Scripture produces good fruit. It produces godly character. It gives you power to bring that flesh of the subjection. It guides you in the all truth. It don't have you running away from God. It don't have you exalting your job or any other thing above Him. The Holy Ghost don't have you robbing God. Then he proceeds to say in the text, in verse 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. See that? And that's what many people fail to understand. Remember, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Remember, he's coming as a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's why you got to always have your antennas up and your radar on. Praise God. That's why many today have a different belief system than what the Bible teaches. And for that reason, they are believing in another Jesus. And the spirit that they have is a counterfeit. Because it never leads them into holiness. Amen. It never leads them to do that which is right in the sight of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Bible says to the beloved, we're to give God the glory that is due Amen. to his name. God don't get no glory when you fuss it and when you cuss it. He don't get no glory when you're lying. And when you steal it. Amen. He don't get no glory when you blaspheme it. Amen. When you're dishonoring your parents. When you're coveting that which is thy neighbors. Amen. When you're worshiping idols. Amen. Come on. When you love this present world. God is not getting no glory. Amen. Are you listening to me? Come on. Thank you Jesus. He said we're to give. And God wants you to give your all. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that your body is to be a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. We to give him all. We're to submit ourselves to his authority and obey him. Amen. See, God knows what he's doing. Amen. God wants to get in the driver's seat of your life. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Because you'll find out a lot of people been in the driver's seat of their own life for too long and they know the wreck in their life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They wreck in their life. They got a dick here and a fender bender here and crack windows here and a bumper all pushed in because they are you listening to me? But if you put Jesus in the driver's seat, hello somebody, he will lead you to life everlasting. Come on, praise God. Somebody put those sacrifices. He wants to be in the driver's seat yes. of your life. No, he don't need no co-pilot. <laughs> He's the pilot. Yes. Come on. Amen. We sing a song, let Jesus lead you. That means he must be in the driver's seat. <laughs> because you'll find out we wreck in our own life. Because we think we, we know more than God. Right. Come on. Right. We got to get that Frank Sinatra out of us. <laughs> I did it my way. Got to get that out of you, praise God. Yeah. Come on. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end 
it up his way is the way of death. You drive in your own life right in the hell. This is the time to repent and call on Jesus so he can deliver you, so he can restore you, so he can put you on the right path. On that narrow road, that highway of holiness that leads to life everlasting. Hello, somebody. Seven thousand year, 
that last 1,000 years, which is the millennium, he's going to set up his kingdom. Man's rule will be over. And Jesus will set up his millennium kingdom for a thousand years upon the earth. Amen. And the scripture says we will reign and rule with Christ. We will be in our glorified bodies. <laughs> never to die again. On the listening to deceitful folks everywhere. You got people you think you can trust and you find out you can't trust them. Even within your own family. Amen. Come on. Amen. A man's foes of them of their own. Jesus said. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why do people think this world is supposed to be perfect when we're living in a fallen world? Right. That's why this world is dying. Hmm? Amen. That's why this world is dying. Yes, we're headed for world government. Praise God. But according to scripture, he's just showing you how closer we are to the end. Because Jesus is going to destroy this last world empire, this new world order that's going to be set up. Amen. What did Daniel the prophet say? I saw the stone hewn at the mountain. It rolled down the mountain and smote the image at the feet. And the Bible said, God shall set up a kingdom. That's the millennial kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Come on. Are you listening? So, bro, we can both understand how closer we are getting to the end. But many expect to live in a world. Where everything's supposed to just go perfect. Well, it's not going to go like that. Your marriage, I don't care how, I don't care how sanctified you are, you're going to go through some things in your marriage. Amen. Come on, yes you are. Amen. Yes you are, praise God. But see, when you're saved and sanctified, you're supposed to have enough wisdom and enough power in the Holy Ghost to, 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 to deal with issues in a godly manner and overcome those things that come into your marriage. Amen. Come on, we're supposed to get the victory over those things. Hallelujah. Hell, see, that's the difference right there. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. So you're going to have problems. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have setbacks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God will allow those things to happen. And sometimes God will allow things to happen because he'll use it to drive you back on your knees, whereby you begin to rediscover who he is, and you begin to call on Jesus for him to deliver you out. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? We want it all to be easy, like Sunday morning. If it was that easy, but I come to tell you, it's not that easy. And just because we live in a fallen world don't mean you, the believer in Christ Jesus, can have peace in the midst of it. Oh, yes, sir. You can have peace in the midst of it. I don't care what you're going through. You can have peace in the midst of it. Follow peace with all men. As much as I think you strive to live peaceable among all men. Blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will give us that peace that passes all yeah. understanding. Hallelujah. And when others around you don't understand how you can have such peace 
we're in the midst of all this turmoil. Now, there's an open door for you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because they want it too. See? You can create your own opportunities to share the gospel. If you live right, if you learn to overcome that flesh and the one clean spirits that's trying to drive you insane, God can open up doors and give you opportunities to witness that you would have never had before. But because we can't get the victory over nothing, you, others can't see the light that's supposed to be in your life and begin to inquire of the Father which is in heaven in whom you serve. Amen. Come on. Amen. See, it's, it's a fight. Yes, fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Those, those spirits don't attack your mind. You gotta fight. Right. Casting down every wicked imagination and every hot thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You gotta fight. Amen. It ain't coming easy. No. This is a war against your soul. And if you're going to be saved, you're going to have to follow Jesus. And Jesus never told anybody that if you follow me, it's going to be a bed of roses. <laughs> he told his disciples in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, he said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you too. The apostle said in Timothy, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He never told you it was going to be a bed of roses. Never told you that one time. Amen. He never told you you wasn't going to struggle. He never told you you wasn't going to go through. Never told you that. He told you what was going to happen. But are you willing to cap the cost and pay the price? When the Bible said, give God the glory due to his name, that means even in your afflictions, right. even in your times of trouble, even when you ain't got no money in your pocket, and everybody know how that one feel. I mean, no, that one don't feel good at all. Praise God. And that's why you got to discover who God is. Because he's greater than riches. One scripture says he's he's better than riches, yay. One scripture says he's greater, he's better than gold, yay, fine gold. You don't believe that. Well, the Hebrew writer brings us out in chapter 11 that when Moses forsook Egypt, he esteemed Christ as a greater treasure. Then the treasures he had in Egypt. Did he have big money in Egypt? Yeah. 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 Well, when he found Christ, he forsook Egypt. All of the riches that he had as being second in command of Pharaoh. And he left it all. Because he found a greater treasure. And Christ was that greater treasure. What did Jesus tell the rich young ruler? Sell all you have, distribute it to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. But he deemed the riches that he had greater than what Jesus said he would obtain in the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible said he turned and he wept. He walked away and wept bitterly. And that's how many people there are today. They don't want to give up nothing for God. Just like the rich they don't give up nothing. Because they value that greater than him. Right. They value that greater than him. Amen. They they value that more, more of a uh, uh, more than their own soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all every all these things are what? Temporary. The scripture says the things that you see are temporal, but the things you don't see are eternal. Hallelujah. Everything you see. It's only temporary and is scheduled to be burned up Amen. like an oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's why you should never be caught up in this world. Amen. That's dying. That's right. Things come and things go. Right. Things come new, and, and a little bit after that, it's old. Yeah. Many of you have got new shoes. They was nice, and then after a little while, they start wrinkling. <laughs> Getting wrinkled, crinched in, and you just didn't look at them the same. Yeah. You get a new cell phone, it just feels new, the weight of it, and after a little while, it's just the same as all of them, old ones you had. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see how that is? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the truth. Yeah. And it started with, it's, well, what's happening? Those things that you had, they were worth, they was worth a lot to you when you first got them. And you look how you treated. Look how you treated that new car when you first got that car. Yeah, yeah. It was all clean, and you was when you turned corners, you turned them carefully. Yeah. <laughs> and after a while, you just now swinging corners and <laughs> roll, running over. You careful what you rolled over. Now you just roll everything. <laughs> because when you first got it, you it had value. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But then after a while, it began to depreciate. In your mind. Yeah. Ain't had that phone three, four months, now you wow. want another. Wow. Ain't had your car a year, now you want another. Wow. Just got the brand new shoes. I don't know, and now you on a you online looking for some more shoes. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Am I right, mother? Amen. Huh? It loses its value quick. See? See, Jesus never loses value. But look how we treat him. Like he has no worth. Because if you ain't careful, you'll treat him just like a pair of shoes. You'll treat him just like a car. You'll treat him just like a cell phone. After a while, he starts depreciating in your mind. Now his word ain't important, prayer ain't important, fasting ain't important, coming to the house of God ain't important, giving your tithes and offering ain't important. That. Amen. Amen. But the scripture said Moses forsook Egypt. He had more than all of us. He had everything. He was a prince in Egypt, and he wasn't even an Egyptian. He thought he was an Egyptian, but he wasn't an Egyptian. He was a Hebrew. He thought he was an Egyptian. And all the others thought he was Egyptian. The only one that knew he wasn't an Egyptian was his the woman who took took him out of the river, the Nile River and, and became his mother. And she knew he wasn't Egyptian. She knew he was Hebrew, but she raised him as an Egyptian. And the book of Acts says he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian. But the day came, he discovered he was not an Egyptian. He was the son of Hebrew slaves. And the Bible says he forsook Egypt. Because he esteemed Christ a greater treasure. Hallelujah. How many have done that? Hallelujah. He forsook the world. Right. And all of its riches, fortune. You done made a name for yourself. But when you find Jesus, you'll leave it all. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll leave it all. Because how many know God always has something better? Right. He'll give you more than what you gave up. Amen. And see, that's, that's where faith come in. Because when many don't have faith in God, they can't see it. They're so in bondage to this world. And they can't see that the enemy is blinding your mind. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the God of this world, speaking of Satan, he's blinded the mind of them that believe not. There's a lot of people who say they believe, and it's a lie. Yeah. They don't believe. Because if you believe, why you reject Jesus? Why are you fighting the scriptures? Why are you why are you walking contrary to his word? Right. Say. Say. 
So you can go in a lot of churches and get away with it. You can't hide in here. Huh? Amen. You can't hide in here. Because <laughs> we're going to shine a light. Hallelujah. See, Jesus come to bring salvation, but we're rejecting it. Because this world is dying. And we try to hold on to something that's dying. But we don't hold on to that old cell phone. We want another one. We don't hold on to that old car. We start looking for another one. Right. Hmm? Amen. That old shirt. I'm ready to throw it out. Or bag it up and drop it off at the Goodwill. <laughs> See that? It's easy for us to get that kind of stuff. We come, to this, we come to this world, we just can't give it up. Because the devil will make you feel like you're missing all the fun. And all of that is nothing but a what? An illusion. It's an illusion. Right. Folks, when Jesus went into the wilderness, the scripture said the devil took him up to a high mountain and he what? Showed, Showed him all the glories of the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. An illusion. And that's what he's doing to most people. <clears throat> An illusion. People don't want to give up nothing. Because those things they don't want to give up is more important to them than Jesus and their own soul. No, you can't have both. No man can serve two masters. You love one, hate the other, hold to one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and man none. Amen. Can't have both. Hmm? Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You can't have both. You can't have your wife and a side piece. You can't have a husband and a sugar daddy. Amen. You can't have the one true God and other gods. And that's what, that's what people really want. They want they, that one ain't enough for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You know, we just preached a message about a week ago about polygamy. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We want a harem. Huh? <laughs> we want a harem. Praise God. Praise God. But you can't have both. God is never sending for being second. You can't even have a second. Amen. A real man ain't sending for seconds. And no, it ain't okay for you to have a second. A real woman ain't sending for seconds. And she ain't sending for you having a second. That's the problem. People don't want to give up nothing. Because they come to love those things more than they love God. Amen. That's why they can't give it up. Well, I just don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, God didn't say. And we need to stop lying and saying what God said and what God didn't say. Jeremiah 23 says what? They use their tongues to say the Lord says or the Lord didn't say. And God said, uh, I ain't said nothing to them. So God gets lied on all the time. And people will do those things often because they don't want to give up nothing. And they'll do whatever they can to try to protect what they love more than they love God. In the last day, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And they'll always try to make up an excuse to hold on to those things that they love more than they love God. Or always try to come up with some excuse to try to have both. You can't have both. I can't have both. Because if I did, I have the I have the other. I can't have both. Amen. You can't have, and, I'm, and if I can't have both, you can't have both either. Amen. And I'm gonna tell you that. Amen. You can't have both. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. God told us in the beginning, have no other gods before me. Can't have both. He's a jealous God. He wants to be the one and only. And he ain't sharing. 
Isaiah chapter 42. He said, my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. He's not sharing his glory. He wants you and all of you. And he don't want to share you. He made you for him. That you might rid the glory to his name. And if you're not saved, you have to get saved. You can't overlook it. You can't pretend. No matter how much truth we have preached in you, and you come into the knowledge of, that don't make you right. Jesus said that you shall know the what? Truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth only makes you free when you receive it. Not because you heard it. Right, yeah. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free when you receive it. That's right. When you receive the love of the truth, that's when bondages begin to break off. Amen. And yokes begin to be destroyed off your life. Amen. But if you just hear it and that's it, and you got a knowledge of it, that doesn't mean anything. You're still lost. And that's why people are the way they are. And they look... They look as dead as, as somebody at a funeral. Mm -hmm. You can look at the, the person in the casket and go look at the people in the church. They look the same way. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just as dead as a dog in the street. And my God is not dead. Amen. Is that what he said? In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12, God is not a... God of the dead. That's how you know a lot of people ain't worshiping God. He's not a God of the dead. He's a God of the dead. He's talking about them that are alive in Christ. With lively stones. Come on. You get the Holy Ghost. You've now been made alive under God. You ain't no dead head. Amen. That's why it says in Psalms chapter 113, the dead praise not the Lord. We're talking about biblical praise. Amen. Sanctified praise. That's what he's talking about in the text. Amen. Come on. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we might show forth his praise. And we can only praise him in the light. Can't live in darkness, talking about everything. God. God don't get no glory when you're in the dark. When you're in sin, when you're in darkness, you're in sin. He comes to deliver you out of the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Colossians chapter 1. Into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. You can't live in one. Hello, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I hope somebody got something Hallelujah. from this. And I'm sure you did. Amen. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Amen. That's what the text teaches us. Amen. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. Amen. But with the one that God has gave me, I'm going to glorify Amen. his name. I'm going to walk up right in his presence. And if a just man fall, you can get back up again. Oh, yeah. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, so at least you can get back up again. Amen. You can get back up again. The devil may have knocked you down, but you can get back up again. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can get back up again. That's why the Bible put that in there. If a just man, and a just man is somebody who was in Christ. Somebody who had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. And if you go back into a life of sin, if you repent and turn from your sins and come back to God, the Bible says a just man, though he falls seven times, you can get back up again. Amen. And God can what? Restore you. Amen. Hallelujah. But your mind got to be made up who you going to serve. Hallelujah. Because when God blesses you to become a partaker of the Holy Ghost, you don't want to play with that. You don't want to play with that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You don't want to play with that. Because when God anoints your life, 
You don't want to do anything to lose it. You don't want to do anything to lose it. I'm telling you. You don't want to do anything to lose it. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your mind. You got to come out of this world. You can't mix with the world because Satan is going to use those people in the world to keep you in bondage. And you got to come out. Somebody said, well, it's hard. Well, there's nothing easy. I was in the world real strong, but I had to come out. Amen. And the thing that's going to cause you to really break ties with the world, you got to have a love for God. And you got to want to be saved. You got to be sick and tired of sin. And living the way I've been living. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to see the hand of God Amen. come on your life, Amen. you got to get sick and tired. You got to have a love for the truth. You got to want to be saved. Amen. And you can overcome that struggle that seems to be unbearable. Oh, yeah. But how many know God never puts anything on you that you can't bear? It's the devil that makes you believe you can't do it. It's too much. But he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise God.